guys, this is Mr. Cockrum. I'm another one of the music teachers here in Visalia, and I'm here to talk to you today about the bells. The bells are a fantastic percussion instrument, and for most of you, if you're really wanting to learn to play the drums and learn to play them well, I recommend you play the bells. You'll be a far better, far better musician for it. Okay? I'm going to show you how to put the bells together and how to play them now that you're starting. This is a set of bells here, typically, that you'll find in a music store. Okay? Most of you are going to have to find your own bells. If you open the case, you'll find that inside you have a set of bells that look like this. And you'll find a little pocket where you'll typically have some mallets. By the way, never stick your music book here in the case. It may damage the bells. Believe it or not, that music book can actually cause these little metal bars to bend. Okay? Now, most of the time when we set these up, you're going to want to put them on some kind of a stand. And a lot of bell sets that you get to begin with will have some kind of a stand with them. But then again, some don't. If that happens, you can either use a table like this is here, and you can set your bells on the table, or you can use a couple of chairs to make a stand. Just take the chairs and put them back to back but make sure you have a wide amount of space between them so that your bells have a good support underneath them. Otherwise, your bells may topple and fall one direction or the other. Take the bells out of the case, take your mallets out of the case, close the case and lock it up, and then put it on top of the chairs. If at any given point it feels like this case is going to fall, Move the chairs until it feels secure. Do not put the bells up here until you know this is secure and it's not going to fall down. Because if it does fall, not only will it make a loud noise, it may damage your bells and it may even damage the floor. Once you have your bells on top, you're ready to start playing. Now, much like you do with the snare drum, the best place to have this is at belly button height. For most of you, the chair height will be enough to get it to where you can play it well. For me, unfortunately, this is a little low, but I don't have adjustable chairs, so I'm going to show you how to work around it, because some of you may have to. The, one of the very important things about playing bells is which mallets you use. If you get a set of school bells, you'll get a pair of mallets like this that have two ends. The ends are rubber on both sides and the heads are a slightly different shape. On one end, you have the ball shape, and on the other hand, you have kind of the squished ball. Okay? Both of those make a similar sound. However, while these are great to rehearse with and they are great to practice with, sometimes they might be hard to hear in a rehearsal situation with a full band. What I recommend you do is if you have trouble hearing these, go out and buy yourself another pair of mallets. And the ones I recommend that you get for this stage are hard mallets. Usually they'll have a hard plastic ball, be it colored or clear, on the end of a handle. Some handles will be made of wood or bamboo, and some will be made of plastic and have this little two-level approach here. Okay? Any pair that you get will work. The main thing is that you can be able to hear yourself in practice, but also you don't want to be too loud. There are mallets you can get that have brass heads on them, metal heads. I don't recommend you get those for right now. Those will dent up your bells, and basically you'll be playing too loud. Now for this, while I do have these mallets here, I'm going to show you what the bells sound like with the rubber mallets that come with the set that you get from the school, and that most of you will probably get when you buy your bell sets. I recommend that you use the round end to start. You can try it with the smaller end and see which end works best for you, but there are certain playing situations that call for the different shaped mallets. We're not going to worry about that for now. To hold the mallets, be sure that you have the end of the mallet that you're not going to be hitting the bells with in the center of your hand. Then grab the mallet, the shaft of the mallet, between your finger and your thumb. And you want to hold it securely, but make sure that it's relaxed. These three fingers here will be curled, and 
it will seem as if the hand's closed, but you're not gripping the mallet tight. If you're gripping the mallet tight and using all those muscles and you start playing, you will cause permanent injury to your hands, and at some point you may have to stop playing altogether. Make sure that this is very relaxed. That's the key to playing bells well. Really, in any percussion instrument, the key is to be very relaxed when you play. Make sure you have the same grip in both hands, and you're going to want to stand up straight. It may not seem like you're holding too much out in front of you, but even with a little pair of mallets like this, they can start to seem heavy after a while. Make sure that your weight is well distributed by standing up straight. Make sure that you're not standing too close to the bells. You want to be standing so that your arm can be straight, extended away from your body, parallel to the floor, and sitting right in front of the bells. Some of you will probably have to back up. So there's a technique I like to show the bell players to start. It's called the house. Okay? You'll notice I have this little roof shape here. I have the wall, and then I have the angled roof. If I hold both my mallets up, Oh look, I'm a house. <laughs> it's goofy, but it works. Okay? Now, when you're playing the bells, the key is not to strike the bells. These aren't hammers. Okay? You want to take the mallet and you want to drop the mallet so that the mallet bounces on the bell much like a basketball would. Then, use your hand to bring the mallet back up, like this. You want to stand directly behind your bells and keep yourself centered on the bells. Okay? If you play over to the sides, you'll move your hands and you may even move your waist, but you want to keep your feet pretty much centered on the bells. Later on when you play larger instruments like this, you'll learn to move around. But for now, you can stay in one place. Remember to drop the, the heads of the mallets on the bars to get a good sound. Don't hammer like this. If the, ha the head stays down on the mallet, you know you're not playing right. Let the, bell, let the bell ring and let the head come back up off the bell. You don't have to pull it up. There's just enough of a bounce that'll do it. When you're playing the bells, you all, you'll get to play more than two notes at a time, certainly. You always want to alternate strokes. That means playing with one hand, then the other hand. I'm going to play a scale for you right now using alternating strokes. This is how you should play when you go from note to note. Here's a B flat major scale. It's that simple. Now, the hardest part about playing the bells is this. This is the hardest part. Once you get the technique down and you learn how to stand where you're standing and you learn how to read the music, you think you're in good shape, but then comes the hard part. Okay? If you really want to learn how to play the bells well, you have to do this now when you're starting to learn how to play. And that is, you have to play the bells without looking at them. You have to be able to look right at your music, right at your music stand, or look up at your director and still play the bells and play everything correctly. Now when you start to do that, things might not seem right, like this. Here's that B-flat major scale again, but I'm not going to look at the bars. That didn't sound right at all, but that's okay. After a while and as you practice, you'll get to the point where you'll know where to hit a B flat without looking at the keyboard. And you'll learn how to move around without looking down. Get used to that now. It's very hard, but if you're going home and practicing at least a half hour every day like you're supposed to, you will get it within the first month. If you practice even more than that, it may come faster. But you don't want to get to the point where you're looking down all the time to play and having to look up and down at your music like this. If you're playing like this, 
You may be able to play quickly, but because you're looking down, you're going to miss connections with the rest of the band because you won't be able to see the director. It's tough, but don't look at the bells when you're playing them. Look at your music and look at the director. You should have your music in a place to where you can look at the music and see the director out of your peripheral vision so that you don't have to do this all the time either. But the key is, don't look at your bells. Once you get used to it, you will notice that you can see them through your peripheral vision down here. You can still see about where the, the mallets hit, and you can play better from there. If you can get that, you're good to go. The bells are a fantastic instrument, guys. This is a great way for you to be able to play musically and to learn a lot more about music than just hitting some old drum. And let me give you a tip. If you play bells now, when you move on into middle school and into high school, you'll get to learn how to play all those other drums. The key is, you won't have to learn the hard stuff first like all the snare drummers do. You'll know the hard stuff to begin with, and you'll get to learn all the cool stuff when you get to middle school. Okay. While I've got you here, let me show you the difference between the mallet heads. You've heard the rubber size, the small heads, and how they sound. Let me compare it to the plastic heads so you can hear them. You notice I was looking down while I was playing? You can't do that. You need to look up. <laughs> these big heads, one of the reasons I'm looking down is because these big heads on these mallets are almost bigger than the bars that they're hitting. And sometimes you're going to have to take a lot of extra care to be sure that you're hitting in the right places. But I still recommend getting a good pair of plastic mallets if you want to be heard above the rest of the band. But it's not required. Hey guys, have a great time playing the bells. I look forward to hearing you. And if you have any questions, talk to your director. And if they don't know what to tell you, have them come see me. And I'll tell them everything you want to know. Have a great year, and thanks for playing.